So I got my PMP nine years ago, even before I was a project manager. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get your PMP certification if you don't have a project management experience. So let's get into it. I'm Nick and you are on Nick's Projects channel. All right, guys, welcome back. If you're new here, quick background about myself. I'm a senior project manager in a Fortune 100 company and I have this YouTube channel dedicated for project management. In today's video, I'm going to share how you can get your PMP certification with no experience, or I should rather say no project management or project manager experience. You should have some experience in the industry that you're working to apply for PMP, but you don't have to necessarily have the project manager title because even in the PMI's website, you don't see that as a requirement. All it needs is some hours of leading and managing a project. You can very well do that even if you're not a PM. You could be in different multiple other roles leading and managing projects. So it's all about how you fill your application and the support that you have from your manager. So your application should go through with no problem. But before that, I wanted to jump in and share my experience how I got my PMP certification so that you understand some of the background because when I applied and got my PMP certification nine years ago I was not a project manager I was not in any capacity leading and managing a project all by myself I was assisting a project manager but that's what I wanted to share because PMP is kind of a chicken and egg thing right so you need to have certain level of experience in order to apply and get the PMP certification. But if you are applying for a job with no experience or no project manager experience, they will ask for PMP certification, which you cannot get until you have certain level of experience. So it's kind of tricky. So that's why I hope that this video will be helpful for some of you, those who are not a project manager yet, but want to get into project manager role and PMP is your impediment that you wanna try to get and you know, move forward into the next role. Let me start with my background when I applied for project management or PMP certification. So this is nine years ago when I applied for my PMP certification and I was not a project manager by any means at that time. I was assisting a project manager. So by role, I was more like a project lead. I would say it was more like a technical lead role. So, you know, if you are in similar situations, you could be a functional testing lead or you could be a quality assurance lead. You could be a lead business analyst. You could be just a business analyst, but helping the PM to plan activities for the project, things like that. So there are different parts of project that all of us get involved into as part of our daily job, right? So that's good enough because you just have to show your experience, how you are involved in the project management phases, whether it be planning or finance or budget costing whatever that is you know you have to just show the areas that you worked with as a project manager or, or assisting a project manager sorry my light died so i had to plug it back in so let's go back to where i was so when i got my pmp certification i was not in project management role i was more like a technical lead managing technical resources and helping the project manager to plan and estimate the effort required for technical aspects of the project, right? So there are other components of the project such as project planning, finance, budget, you know, managing budget, managing time of resources. And there are different things that I was not involved. Okay, let's back out a bit. So when I was doing that role, there were certain terms and technical things that I did not know about. For example, when the project manager would come down to me and say, give me the estimate or how much time. So I was not sure how to do the estimation properly, right? I know how to do it roughly, but I want to do it in a correct way. So I started looking online on documents, how to estimate the effort, you know, how to add buffer, contingency and all that. So as I was reading those content online, I realized that it was coming up as, you know, from the pages of project management and PMP and other boards and stuff like that. So 
automatically it led to certain knowledge areas within the PMP that I was reading and applying in my job without my knowledge, right? At the time when I was doing the job, I was just doing my job and wanted to do it in a better way. I mean, it was just because I was searching for the topics on, you know, planning and estimation. It obviously was project management and PMP related topics. So it led to gradually understand what that is and how to do it and what are the different ways to do it you know the earned value management and things like that so naturally i would say 40 percent of things for pmp i was knowingly or unknowingly doing in my job so i thought you know if i can get the certification then probably i can go to my next role within that same company and you know within that same job that's my background so just to give some context that's the background as to why i decided to write the pmp exam so in your case it could be for your next job or next role within your organization whatever the case may be pmp is a good certification to have in your belt right so uh, let's look at the qualification so as per the pmi you can go to pmi.org and look at the qualification so there are two ways to apply for pmp the first way you should have a four-year degree then you need three years of experience leading project and 35 hours of education or training in project management if you already have a four-year degree and getting the 35 hours of training is not a big deal because you have to read the PEM book. It's easily going to take beyond 35 hours. So it's not a constraint at all. You can still get that 35 hours of education and training that is required. But you need three years, 36 months of experience leading project, right? So all you have to do is when you fill in the application, you have to show that the experience that you put in working in your real project, you know, you might not have worked as a project manager, but at least in the application show that as you contributed towards planning and you contributed towards, you know, estimation. Um, I tried to download my application. It's, it was nine years ago. I can't find it anymore. So I remember there was certain sections like planning and, uh, you know, different things in project management. So you have to split your project and plug in in those sections as that you did that. So you're just doing that as part of your job, uh, helping your project manager, or let's say if you are a QA or if you are a business analyst, you might be still asked by the PM or the team member asking, hey, how long does it take to do that, right? So you are estimating. So I'm just giving some examples so so knowingly or unknowingly you might be doing some kind of planning and different pieces of project management within your day job or within your current role that's where you have to be creative and when you fill in the application you just have to make sure that your real experience is projected as you know the planning and the estimation and things like that within the application find a manager who can support that right so in my case I had manager I was reporting to, he was very open on me gaining or me wanting to get that certification, even though I was not a project manager at the time. So if an audit comes, then he would definitely support me. So but if anything comes back from PMI as audit to confirm that I have those experience and I have somebody to support and say, yes, he has that experience. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have the option one where you have four year degree and you just need three years of project management experience, all you need to show in the applications is that you have done that activities and projects. You know, you don't have to say that you are a project manager. You don't have to put that in the application. When I filled in the application, there was a section for title. I put in as the project lead in the organization, whatever title you have, you can put that. Nobody's expecting that you should be a project manager. All PMI is asking is that you have experience leading those projects. And that is something that you might have already, even though you're not a PM. So that's what I wanted to share. So the key here is you have to get through the application and then if an audit comes, you should have somebody to support it, right? So that's all. It's not rocket science. You don't have to worry about, hey, I'm not a PM, so I'm not qualified to do the examination. That's not the case. If you have 
done or experienced project management activities, even though you're not a PM, you know, you are still qualified. You can go ahead and write the exam. I mean, the worst thing is even if it comes back as an audit, you just have to wait and prove that, that you have done those roles and, you know, you will be through. The difficult part is getting to learn things that you have not done in your role, right? As if you're not a project manager by title, there are so many other things that you have not done. As I said earlier, what I was doing as part of my role as a project lead was only 40% of project management. So I'm still unknown of about 60% of things that happens in project management. So that is a key to make sure that you read the PEM book. And if you have the money, I would highly recommend that you join a uh, educational training program outside. Just, you know, don't do by just reading the PEM book and go for the exam because if you're not a PM, then that external training would give you that exposure to other PMs who comes to that, you know, boot camp or whatever that is. So mine was, I believe, three or four weekend course that I joined. And when you join those training, most of the time those training providers are a rep, I think registered education providers. And this is the key. Just make sure that you do this if you're not a PM. When you apply through them, through the rep, the chances of audit are very less. I think at least that's my experience because you're joining them and you have a proof already that you paid for the training and you got your education required to attend and write the exam. So more than the actual real life experience that training qualifies or supersedes anything else, at, at least in my experience. And I'm going to tell you why, because the real world project management experience is far away from what PMP has in their exam. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing a full-time PM or not. The PMP exam is a completely different animal. So don't worry about the exam. If you study the PEM book and you practice the question and answer, it's like any other examination, you're going to pass. No problem there. So don't worry that you don't, you're not a PM, so you may not pass the exam. That's not the case. So coming back to the point, the reason for that education or training that if you can attend, if you have the money, I would say spend that, it's well worth it. One good thing that can happen in the training is you are exposed to other PMs so you can talk and ask questions, you know, you can understand the real world PM situation by interacting with them. Second, the, your application goes through that r registered educational provider, rep. Your application has more weightage. The chances of getting an audit is less. So that's another thing. And then the training. Obviously, you're going to learn that remainder or the remaining 60% that you have not gained uh, through your current experience, right? So that kind of experience comes through that training. So for me, at least, it was money well spent. So... If you have the option to do that, you know, take that external training and that will help you in the application process, gaining additional knowledge, exposure to interact with other PMs, build a relationship with other project managers outside your organization. So when you are in the job market, you know, definitely it's going to help, hopefully, right? So that's the application process. And then... Uh, then the exam, you know, I'm not going to get into that. It's it's basic. You just have to read the PEM book, the project management body of knowledge. Then you have to practice exams and then you pass the exam. So um, that's, you know, that's something that you have to spend time and study and then prepare and go and write the exam. That has nothing to do with experience or not. So uh, all I wanted to say today is, you know, if you're not a project manager and if you are stuck in not getting your PMP examination, just uh, don't worry about your actual title. You might have done project management part of it within your current role, knowingly or unknowingly. So uh, just apply those experiences and study the PEM book and uh, get through the application process and you should be all good. You don't need to have a project manager title or a project manager experience in order to qualify for PMP exam. All you need is, as per PMI, 
36 months of leading projects. And uh, you might have that within your current role. Um, so you just have to make sure that you qualify that appropriately when you put in the application form and have a good manager who can support that. All right, guys, so that's all for today. I hope this video helped you in some ways. And if it did, give it a like. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because this channel is all about project management, tips, tricks, and discussions like this. So I would be happy to have you on here. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.